if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us more to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the word we say. How can your pardon reach and bless the Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in everlasting spirit through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore our God. Please join me in saying the portion of Psalm 103 printed in your bulletin. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all the benefits of the Lord. The Lord forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, redeeming your life from the grave and crowning you with mercy and loving kindness, satisfying you with good things and renewing your youth like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. O Lord, you make your ways known to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. You are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is your mercy great upon those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our sins from us. As parents care for children, so do you, O Lord, care for those who fear you.
reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God shall be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew will be delivered by our Deacon Lynn by video. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out,
came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe me. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In the name of the one true and living God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Today's psalm is one of my absolute favorite, favorite psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who is the psalmist talking about? Who is to receive this blessing? You and I. You and I. All hearers, all believers, all listeners all doers. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, that I might receive God's forgiveness and healing, redemption, that my heart may be satisfied, that I will be filled with compassion and mercy as well as shown compassion and mercy, that God's righteousness, God's wholeness will be restored in me as I recognize that this is a God who cares for us. Now, our reading, thank you, Brian, for reading, our reading from Romans reminds us that we cannot pass judgment on one another from anyone that chooses to practice in a different way than we practice. And it ends with the sentence I opened today's service with, which is part of the anthem in our burial office, a reminder of whose we are and to whom we belong. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Now we jump into Matthew, and this story is wonderful. It is, however, a little odd and seems to be disjointed. Because this question of Peter's seems to come out of left field. I mean, what are they talking about? That all of a sudden Peter wants to know how often he should forgive another member of the community. And notice that he used the word church. Well, there was no church when Matthew's gospel, um, when Jesus was walking the earth. But evidently, by the time Matthew's gospel was finessed and worked into canon, church was used to describe the people of God, Ecclesia, those that are gathered together, that eclectic group that are gathered together and call themselves Christians. Hence, we have Paul's letter reminding us that we might choose to practice slightly different, but we are indeed all Ecclesia. Then we jump into this lovely little parable about the wicked slave or the ungrateful slave. And a lot of times as preachers, we focus on his lack of gratitude. And while I think that that's important, he did not express gratitude, nor did he express humility before God. I think that we really need to move it away from this wicked servant and apply it more closely 
to ourselves. We fight all the time with the idea that there is a vengeful God and the idea that there is a merciful God. And we work to mesh together those conflicting ideas of who God is. Here we have a parable and a psalm that speak to us very clearly telling us who God is. God is one who shows mercy, forgives, redeems, who cares, who helps us to strive toward wholeness, the completeness of a human being so that we might truly express gratitude, humility, and repentance when it's necessary, which for most of us, speaking for myself, is from moment to moment. Jesus' message is very clear. While we tend to be judgmental, God is eager to forgive. God understands that the debt each of us owes is beyond our ability to pay. And that gratitude, humility, and repentance need to be an inherent part of any gathered community, of any ecclesia, any church. God's law is a mirror for us. We hold it up to see how we're doing and what we need to ask forgiveness for. And the number of times we have tripped and stumbled over our own words, over our own actions. The idea that God could take revenge, in fact, many of us believe should take revenge on occasion for an act, despite the fact that that is what we want to believe, its only usefulness is if it gives us a mirror to uh, stay in line, so to speak. I'm recording this on September 11th. September 11th is a catastrophic event in our memory. We are faced today with any new number of catastrophic events across this world. Isaiah, in that third song, said, ruin and destruction are within the borders. They are. And that the sign of God's presence is when that ruin and destruction is gone. We need to return to God, let go of our vengeance, accept the forgiveness offered to us and the healing that that brings so that we might turn to others and say, I know I have messed up and I'd like to take hold of your hand and walk with you on this journey to return to God so that we might, as a people, as a church, practice generosity and gratitude and forgiveness and humility. It is good that we have chosen this Sunday to celebrate Holy Eucharist during the in-person gathering. It has been six months since we were able to share Holy Eucharist. For those of you that are able to come, welcome. For those of you that do not yet feel comfortable venturing into an in-person gathering, please know that Holy Communion will be offered every month. On this Next month it will be the second Sunday also. And we will work towards having once a month communion. But one of the reasons that we celebrate communion is that we are reminded of our own vulnerability, our own need. And as we observe this day of 9-11, we are reminded all too acutely of our vulnerability. 
when we live in the midst of pandemic and pestilence and famine and fire and flood, we are also reminded of our vulnerability. We need to gather together to practice and build a community of gratitude, of forgiveness, of humility. This present chaos and division is the hazard of failing to love our neighbor, fully recognizing the grace we ourselves have received, the hazard in standing in judgment of fulfilling, of failing to see ourselves reflected in the mirror of God's gratitude, humility, and repentance. We have indeed been graced in our community. And as a Christian community, St. John's, along with all others, are called to practice and reinforce those concepts of gratitude, humility, and repentance, to fully practice these characteristics. We need to listen and hear and to not become defensive when we engage and learn and investigate and ask questions and remember the grace that has been given to us and offer thanksgiving to God for that grace. To remember our own limited sight and yet reach out to others. St. John's is striving to offer several listening and learning opportunities as a congregation. First off, we have begun a conversational partnership with two Episcopal parishes in Mount Vernon. Our initial goal is to attempt to understand the dynamics of faith and practice and ministry each lives into in their community. And then we would like to begin to investigate how we can each, we can partner in an effort growing from the, the vision to practice ministry together, ministry that inherently is one of gratitude and repentance and humility. To that end, Peter Russell and Deacon Lynn have reached out through um, the deacon at St. Mary's Chappaqua to St. Clement, St. Paul, and Ascension, both in Mount Vernon. We hope that this relationship will grow to be one of shared ministry and worship. A different challenge of, of all of sorts, and one that would heighten our awareness of food insecurity in our community, is to adopt the idea that we would take and go and purchase for ourselves what the family, a family from, for the, from the food pantry receives in a normal dis distribution. There are many restrictions on who can apply, and there are many cuts now to the SNAP program, which is a supplemental program, and to the women and infants and children program as well. So it would be a good exercise for us to begin to understand more deeply and personally the sense of what food insecurity means as you attempt to raise a family. So here's the opportunity. I have published a list of uh, the normal food in the, in the baskets that are distributed. They are in the bulletin that you have today. They will also go up on the website. And your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to purchase and then work from and feed your family on the food that would be supplied. I invite you to video your efforts in order to share them with us and your thoughts of the experience, share any recipes you come up with, and insights of how you stretched the food. And at the end of the challenge, send your experience and videos to me and we will post them on our website in our own mini documentary effort. It's important to remember that there are items that are not included in these distributions. Soap of any description, for example, be it laundry, dish, or body, and toothpaste. 
And while occasionally the volunteers at the food pantry pick up diapers for families, they are not typically included. So both of these learning opportunities offer us a chance to practice gratitude, humility, and repentance, and the recognition of God's grace. God's grace needs to be a natural extension of our life and our freedom and our practice in helping us to love our neighbor as ourselves. It is a way to step away from the division and the chaos that is now overwhelming us. I invite you to participate in the food pantry challenge as you continue to support the, the pantry. And I invite you to remember that you are indeed blessed and to express the gratitude for your life in this creation, knowing that God has given us everything we need to thrive, to be humble about all that you have managed to achieve, and to repent, to look at the mirror of God's law and say, aren't I lucky that God is more merciful than I am? May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. I invite you to listen to Angie singing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Please join me in singing this simple hymn, Bless the Lord, My Soul. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into Creed is printed in your bulletin on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We pray for those suffering with COVID-19, those who are quarantined and those anxious in the uncertainty of this constantly evolving pandemic, especially Maria from Holy Innocence, Father Luke and Father Hoyt also from Holy Innocence. We pray for those struggling to overcome violence in their community, for peacemakers, peacekeepers, and peace seekers. We pray for all police officers. May they be filled with hope and kept in safety in God's care. We pray for all those who have suffered, been injured, or died in the violence overwhelming our nation. We pray for peace and unity among us as we seek a new way forward as a people of faith. We pray for all those who are suffering in the fires out west and are, who are waiting for the next tropical storm or hurricane to hit, hit in the southeast. We pray for those who are in hospital or at home, home recovering, especially Laura, Deacon Lynn, Yumi, Linda, Ronald, Max, Anne, Kathy, Barbara, Ellie, Stephen, and Shlomo. We pray for those who are homebound, Esmeralda, Margaret, John and Lee, Dorothy, Bill, Jim, Marge, Joe, Carolyn, Deanna, and Bill and Dorothy. We pray for those struggling with chronic illness, especially Liz and Jeff, Andrew, Rena, Rebecca, Vince, Sarah, Annalise, Martha, Gerald, Marilyn, Joyce, Paul, Helene, Jason, and Jeff. And we pray for Edwin Sanchez and the students at the El Hogar School and the, friends of the, the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem. And we pray for those in our hearts whom we now name, either silently or aloud. Please join me in saying the collect for the day. O God, because without you we are not able to please, you mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and, lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And the collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversary. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the unemployed. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I would like to just call your attention to the back of your bulletin and the announcements. Uh, first of all, please join us for coffee hour at 1030 through Zoom. The, the link will be sent to you, uh, or is in the email that you use to open this. I want to thank all of you who have remembered St. John's in your offerings and in your prayers. Uh, I would remind those of us who use the e-pledge from the diocese 
that September is the last month that they will take uh, funds from our uh, from our accounts and we will need to make other arrangements. A reminder that St. John's Thrift Shop is closed at the moment for both um, donations and shopping, but hopes to reopen in a limited way in October. We now have parish office hours from 10 to 1 on Tuesdays. Please drop in if you feel like you need to have a chat or drop something off. I invite you to Tuesday noon prayers, at noon obviously, links go out in the morning. And in our Wednesday Bible study, we have just begun the letter of James, so if you have debated about joining us, please do. Also in the, uh, on page 9 in your bulletin is a more full description of the Food Insecurity Awareness Challenge. If you have any questions, you can email me at mothermarystjohns at gmail.com and I'll get back to you. I will be reaching out to uh, several of you in person to ask you in particular to participate and, and take good notes and journal to share the experience uh, with those who perhaps might be too shy to be on camera. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.